This week on Healthy Living, from the fight against rabies in Ethiopia, the global efforts to curb the spread of COVID-19 and the development of eye-opening smart contact lenses, we look back on some stories that highlighted the year 2021. Hello, I'm Lina Khmudu. Thank you for joining us on Healthy Living. From the global fight against COVID-19 to the approval of the first vaccine against malaria and addressing climate change, 2021 has been a very busy year for Africa and the world. It was also very busy in health and wellness. There was good news, such as the World Health Organization announcing the first vaccine against malaria. On the other end, there have been some challenges, including the COVID-19 virus that is still with us and continues to spread. Here is a look back at some of the stories we shared with you this year. We start with rabies. It is a disease that can spread to people and pets if they are bitten or scratched by a rabid animal. In 2017, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC, reported that each year thousands of people are infected with rabies in Ethiopia and an estimated 2,700 people died, one of the highest rabies death rates in the world. The capital city, Addis Ababa, accounts for a large number of strayed dogs. Our reporter, Dawit Ejegu, has this story from Addis Ababa. The World Health Organization says rabies is a vaccine-preventable viral disease which occurs in more than 150 countries and territories. Ethiopia is among the top countries where the virus takes the lives of thousands each year, according to the Ethiopian Public Health Institute. The WHO also affirms that dogs are the main cause for the spread of the fatal virus to humans. Once a person shows symptoms, it's usually too late to treat, and they will likely die. According to experts at the Ethiopian Public Health Institute, rabies cases increase during the rainy season in Ethiopia, mostly from July to September. The Tigray and Amhara regions experience the highest numbers of cases. Currently, we estimate around 2,700 people die of rabies virus in Ethiopia every year. As an expert, I would say this data is not completely accurate, as many cases are not even reported. The director for the Veterinary Public Health Directory at the Ministry of Agriculture also says rabies is also causing killing animals like cows, goats and sheep. There is a correlation between rabies cases and the number of stray dogs because dogs are the main agents for the infections. So if the number of stray dogs increase or even if dog owners aren't managing their dogs well, rabies cases will definitely increase. There are two types of vaccines for rabies, says Dr. Yima, but Ethiopia only produces nerve tissue vaccine which is less effective than with the latest cell culture vaccine. The cell culture vaccine is more effective. We don't make it here. We have to import it, and the high cost prevents most people from accessing it. Dr. Yema indicated Ethiopia is working together with several stakeholders to control the spread of the disease by 2030. We turn now to veganism, the practice of abstaining from the use of animal products, including in diet. In Nairobi, Kenya, an increasing number of people are adopting a plant-based diet. The vegan movement is gaining traction in the region, largely due to health concerns, animal welfare and the environment. VOA Swahili reporter Huba Abdi visited Soul Vegetarian, a vegan restaurant in Nairobi, and Grace Onyomi reports. Joyce Injoroge is a regular customer at Soul Vegetarian Restaurant in Nairobi. She's among the few Kenyans who practice veganism. Before, I was a vegan. 
Before I became a vegan, I was getting many diseases and I didn't understand what exactly was making me sick. One day, I started thinking that maybe the food I was eating was a problem. Then I met someone who introduced me to veganism and I started understanding that there are foods that help your body resist some diseases. Daniela Ram moved to Kenya from the United States in 2015. She started so vegetarian a vegan restaurant. I wanted to share what I knew and understood of veganism and how good it was here in Kenya. And also, I wanted to have somewhere to eat. <laughs> Plant-based eating is increasingly recommended by scientists and nutritionists as a healthy diet that, if followed on a regular basis, can reduce the risk of some diseases. But some say it's not easy to give up things like milk and beef. <laughs> What people don't know is there are other things you can consume that make you feel like you don't miss those things. For example, we have milk made from soybeans. You can find it easily in many shops. The Vegan Society of Kenya defines vegan as not eating or using animal products. Veganism is not just a diet, but a way of living. There are spiritual benefits because you, you are not involving yourself in cruelty. And then there are health benefits. Like I said, you are getting the whole nutrition from the plant without, um, you know, animal products have a lot of cholesterol, antibiotics, and diseases. So as a vegan, you eliminate that and you get better health. Some studies show that a plant-based diet offers some healthy benefits. For example, it can help reduce hypertension. And a study conducted by the United Nations concluded that livestock causes an estimated 14.5% of man-made greenhouse gases globally. So your body isn't the only thing that will benefit from a vegan lifestyle. It's also good for the planet. The COVID-19 pandemic has continued to dominate the news worldwide this year. At least 5 million people have had their lives cut short by the virus whose best defense is a vaccine, according to experts. And since the outbreak of the pandemic, scientists have focused on developing them. VOA's Carol Pearson explains some of the different approaches to making effective vaccines. Three COVID-19 vaccines use weakened adenoviruses, which are viruses that cause colds. The Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine uses a chimpanzee adenovirus that has been weakened so it can't make people sick. Sputnik V and the Johnson & Johnson vaccine use weakened human adenoviruses. Scientists removed the gene from the coronavirus's spike protein and put it into the adenoviruses. They also removed the gene in the adenovirus that can cause illness. Think of the adenovirus as an envelope with a message inside. The message tells the cells to make the spike protein. The body makes antibodies to defend itself. If it sees the spike protein again, the body is prepared to attack. You don't just mount an immune response to the adenovirus, but you also mount the immune response to the protein that it encodes, that spike protein that is part of the virus causing COVID. Both Johnson & Johnson and Sputnik V's first doses are made with a rare human adenovirus, AD25. The second dose of Sputnik V contains AD5, an adenovirus people are frequently exposed to. Scientists are concerned that Sputnik V doesn't offer enough protection against COVID-19. There are other ways to make vaccines. The latest method involves messenger RNA vaccines, or mRNA vaccines, which are produced by Moderna and Pfizer-BioNTech. They use techniques to trick the immune system into seeing, thinking it's seeing a pathogen without actually providing most of or all of the pathogen. Cox says it's not surprising that researchers could develop mRNA vaccines against COVID-19 so quickly. Because they had been testing vaccines using this strategy against other pathogens. There's an advantage of having so many vaccines against COVID-19. The whole world needs to be vaccinated. 
Another advantage is that scientists might be able to figure out which vaccines work best for different people. Is living a healthier life one of your goals in 2022? If yes, here are some tips from the experts. Keep a consistent sleep schedule. Experts advise to have about eight hours of sleep at night. Eat right, get enough fruits, vegetables, and protein. Exercise regularly. Staying physically fit has numerous benefits such as preventing cardiovascular disease and improving muscular health. Finally, protect yourself from COVID-19 and the flu with the three W's by wearing a mask, washing your hands and watching your distance. One topic that moved us this year was dwarfism or restrictive growth, a medical or genetic condition that causes people to be shorter than normal. We spoke with Joachim Wangi, founder and president of the non-profit organization Short Stature Society of Kenya, who shared his experiences as someone with the condition. Take a look. I was born with my pituitary glands dead, so they could not produce the growth hormones. When a child is born with pituitary dwarfism, they are given hormone boosters and they, uh, they regenerate growth hormones. But in Kenya, because it's in Africa, you know, we are not well developed until now. They don't have those type of medication or machines to detect a child has this type of condition. Sometimes my bones are very weak, so I cannot lift something which is very, very heavy. Ladies is where there's a lot of issues. They are so small when they get pregnant, most of them they cannot carry pregnancy for nine months. Sometimes doctors who don't know, they take them through uh, the normal labor and they have to go through a cesarean section, you know. So like we've lost a few members in Kenya giving birth. There's a lot of challenges. First of all, uh, getting into those public vehicles, they are so high, you, somebody has to lift you. For us men, we have a problem accessing public toilets. My first day in high school was the worst day in my life. I cannot even forget. Nobody wanted to sit close to me. And then when it came to break time, the whole school, they all came to our class to, to stare at me. After that, you know, when the teacher told them about me, that's when now they started to embrace me. This year, technology has continued its push into healthcare and medical breakthroughs. From smartphones to billboards, digital displays are everywhere. But some companies say the ideal display is the human eye itself, and they are developing some eye-opening smart contact lenses. Tina Trin reports. We consult screens every day for information. But what if that experience could be delivered straight to your eyes with smart contact lenses? Engineers at startups are already developing smart lenses that marry augmented reality with everyday contact lenses. We started from the safety and the uh, efficacy of contact lenses as they are now, and then we worked out how to integrate circuitry into those kind of lenses. While InWith works with soft contact lenses, another company uses a more rigid medical grade lens. MojoVision claims to have made the world's smallest and densest micro LED display. We can pass data wirelessly to that display and it projects it onto your retina. Both InWith and MojoVision's lenses work in tandem with the user's smartphone to relay information to the lens. MojoLens has built-in motion and image sensors. It'll likely be years before consumers can test drive these lenses, but the technology is already proving they're more than meets the eye. Happy holidays! Welcome, Baal. Maisha na afya inakutakia maandalizi mema ya siku ya Christmas na mwaka mpya popote pale unapoangalia VOA Yes it's the holiday season and we wish you a joyful time filled with love Peace and cheerful celebration. Tika ete mite mala bino banso, mitonda na bolingo kimia pe esengo. Meilleur vœu de bonheur et de succès pour 2022 à vous et vos proches. Et surtout, une très bonne santé à tous. Mechou, ye gorgoro sarenu, haya, haya hulet. Amatemret, ye salamena, ye trina, andionilatru. 
hasta mañana. From all of us here at Healthy Living, have a memorable and safe holiday. All the best to you and your loved ones for the upcoming new year. And strive to make every day in 2022 a healthy day.